I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and today I'm back with my Land Rover Discovery XD. When I got this vehicle, it didn't run, and it took me several videos to get it running. The auxiliary lights that you see on the roof rack and on the front of the vehicle have never worked. That's what I'm going to tackle today. Let's examine the wiring and see if we can get them to work. On this vehicle, we have three types of lights in two different locations. I'm going to call these Land Rover fog lights, the grill lights, or the fog lights. Then on the roof rack, we have a Hella on each side. And then these other two lights here, I'm not sure what brand they are at the moment. And as far as I know, all of these roof lights would turn on all with the same switch. But I might be wrong because I've never seen them work. Inside the vehicle, there's a switch right here. And I've marked on there because I can hear the relay click when that's on. Okay, it is still clicking with the key off. So whatever this switch is triggering, it can be on when the key is not on. Then here in the center console, there's a couple switches right here, which I assume one of these should turn on those lights on the grill. So let's turn the vehicle on. If I hit those switches, nothing happens. So if I'm lucky, it's just a blown fuse as to why those lights aren't turning on. There is also a switch over here. Again, that one does nothing. I think this on European models would be for the rear fog lights. And why do we have two switches for the front fog lights? Not sure, but that's pretty neat. If I can get them to work, that is. Coming down from those roof lights, there is a wire right here. Runs down into the vehicle there. And then there's a relay right here. And I think this is the one that's triggered by that switch. Looks like it is grounded right here. And there's a wire that runs over there. And I'm assuming that's a supply wire. So this could be a good place to start, see if we do have voltage here and see if the relay is outputting power going up this wire. And then right now I'm going to assume that these lights are grounded up there and that there is not a ground wire running up here. But we'll have to investigate that as well. So if I take my voltmeter and measure this wire coming supposedly from over from the battery yeah, I have 12 volts on that. Okay, this one runs up to the roof. So I'm gonna clip my voltmeter onto this wire and when I flip the switch, we'll see if we get power to it. Yes, there, so there's power going up to those lights. So the problem with the lights is up there, either with the bulbs or with their grounds. Up here on the roof rack, there is actually two wires up here this one right here that's got this type of terminal on it which looks like a ground and then this one right here which I'm guessing is the power and seems to be connected over there this light is not connected to anything this light is also not connected to anything so it's no wonder that these two don't turn on. Over here on the other side of the Land Rover, we do have another wire running up here, and that looks like it's the power for the rear work light. And if we look at these lights, this first one appears to be connected. And the second one appears to be connected as well. So I will focus on these first two lights first and figure out why they are not working. So I've cut the electrical tape and pulled back this insulation. It looks like these wires, um, feels like there is some solder in there, but as you can see, they just balled up the wires and put a bunch of solder there and then just slipped this over it. This is not a good connection. I'm going to have to rewire all of these. So I might as well just cut all these wires off and then test the lights with some test leads and see if they even turn on. I've cut off the wire for this first light. I have ground to it. I'll supply power to it. 
and it does work. So if I get power up here, this light will work. Let's move on and test the next one. It's funny, I thought these wires were white, but they, they're actually just sun faded and they used to be red. Let's test this one now. No light yet, but I haven't supplied the ground. It could be a bad ground. Looks like it must be grounded to the bolt that holds the light on. Nothing. So I think the bulb is bad in this one. On the next one, the ground is already disconnected and so is the power. Let's put power to this one, see if it works. And it does work. Okay. And then here on this last one, this one is also cut. Let's see if this one works. And it does. Okay, I'll pull this old power wire off, rewire it up to the lights, and then I'll double check and see what this is. But I think this is a ground that was run up here. I've made sure both of the wires are tucked back under this trim piece and I've wired up both the power and ground to this first light. Let's turn on the switch and make sure that this is working. Looks like it works, so I can continue the connections on to the other lights and I'll be done with the wiring for the lights on the roof rack. I have them all wired up now and three of them light, that one that we determined was not any good still does not turn on. Now that I have the wiring done, I'll take that light off and see if it's something that we can fix. I've taken that non-working light apart. Here's the bulb holder. I have the bulb out now. And if I touch it to the battery, you can see it does work. I can't believe that all these bulbs are still working after all these years. So I just need to put it back together and figure out why it wasn't working. I'm sure that it just wasn't getting a good ground. So I'll just test it every step as I put it back together. And then we should have all the lights up there working. I've put it all back together. Let's hit the switch. Now they all come on. So I can move on to the front lights now. Those lights on the roof, I had a pretty good idea on how they worked because the switch triggered a relay and I saw the wires from that relay running up to the roof. These lights on the front, I don't know what switch they're on, and that's a problem with troubleshooting why they don't work because I don't even know which switch I'm supposed to have on. So I guess I'll just turn them all on. Okay, I was messing around with the lights and I figured if this was a factory installed option, I must have to have the headlights on. Then I started to hit these switches over here. Now that one turned on. Let's check the front. And <laughs> look at that, they both still work. That's amazing. With all the front ones working, now maybe I should tackle this rear light and see if I can get it to work too. But again, like the front lights, I don't know the switch or combination of switches that would need to be turned on to turn this light on. So troubleshooting it may be a little difficult. The wire for this light runs along the side here, then down the A-pillar. Just like on the other side, we see a fuse that does not look like a factory item. And then there's a relay here, and possibly this is the wiring that controls that light. So this is where I'm going to start. Alrighty, I can see the ground for the relay is very loose. Possibly this is the reason why it's not kicking on. I've pretty quickly found another problem. This is the ground wire that runs up to that light, and it looks like the mice have chewed it in half. So even if there was power up to that light, it's not grounded. Now that the ground is fixed, let's check the relay. This is an actual Hella relay. Make sure that it is good and actually works. So just put in my relay tester. I have it set to four pin and not five pin. Hit the button. And it looks like the relay is good. It is working. So if we get the wiring figured out, the relay is good and the light should turn on. This is my relay bypass kit. These look like relays, but they actually have switches on them so that I can activate things that use relays uh, without having the trigger working. This one would be for the five pin relays. This one is the same one for the four pin relays. If I plug this in, I can just flip the switch and see what the relay would do if it was activated. So I can just plug this in where the relay was. Now I have a toggle switch. 
that I can do the same thing as turning the relay on. Let's turn it on and go see if the light works. Okay, the light is on. So we know all the wiring to the light works and we know that we have power there. And if we can just activate the relay, it should turn the light on and off. I've connected a jumper wire into the terminal that would activate the relay. And then I have that connected to my multimeter. And I have my multimeter paired to my phone so that I can hold my phone and watch what's happening on the multimeter. This allows me to hit the switches inside the vehicle and be able to see what's going on out here without having someone to help me. So we wanna find a switch that gives us voltage at our multimeter. And I would assume that that rear light would be this one. Well, that's not giving us voltage. Let's try some other switches. Still nothing. Let me try different combinations. It doesn't look like any switch is turning that relay on. It could be a blown fuse or the mice could have ate the wire somewhere, which might be impossible to find. I did pull out the manual. This is a special edition of the vehicle with the fog lights on the front and the work light on the back. I was just wondering if there was anything in here about how to operate it so that I can at least get an idea of where to start. Interestingly, the switch that I turn on my front fog lights is not 16. It's the one next to it, which isn't even pictured. And this diagram also doesn't show that rear light switch. So I'm thinking that it's special equipment that I'm not going to have any documentation on. So here we go. That button is for the rear fog lights, which turn on when the ignition is on and the headlights are on. Didn't seem to work for my, sh for my work light. Still here, it shows only the one forward light. In the fuses, we have rear fog guard lights, fuse number nine. That looks to be the only thing in here that looks helpful. But of course, there is a fuse right there at the relay. So I'm guessing it was added and it's not actually part of any of these. Here's the fuse box right here. I have already checked these all before, but I'll do it again. Main fuse that we are concerned about is the fourth one down on this side. They're all tens, but let's just check them all because it only takes a second. If we hear a beep, it's good. This is our one right here. It's good. Ooh, what do we have here? Oh, no, it's good. Hey, it looks like they all work. Right now, I'm going to guess that the problem is a mouse ate a wire somewhere in this vehicle. If you do have one of these with the rear work light, let me know uh, in the comments below how you turn that light on. I'm sure that I've done it and tried it, but just in case I missed something, let me know in the comments below. That's gonna be it for today. I don't think I really need that rear work light. And if I do decide to make it work, there's some new, more modern options of making that work even better. And if you want to see more videos on this Land Rover or any of my other Land Rovers, comment below and click subscribe.